What's going on guys? In this video we're going to be continuing our Python iter tool series and in this video we will tackle drop while and take while. Now drop while and take while are slightly esoteric methods of the iter tools library. However, they can be pretty useful depending on the situation. Now, first start off with what the docs say. And the first time I read it, I was a little confused and the lack of examples in the documentation as well didn't help. All right, so according to the docs, it says make an iterator that drops elements from the iterable as long as the predicate is true. So in this case, the predicate means the condition. So whatever condition you are feeding into it, if the condition is true, it will continue to drop elements. So now let's continue. It says afterwards returns every element. So note the iterator does not produce any output until the predicate first becomes false. So it may have a lengthy startup time. So basically what it's saying is you give it a condition and until the condition hits false, you're not going to get any elements back. So if you have five elements and the first three elements are true based on your predicate or whatever your expression is, then those first three elements will be dropped and then you'll start to get all of the elements back. All right, so that might have been a little confusing, but once we go through the code, you'll get a better understanding. So let's just dive right into it. The first thing we'll do is we'll import random shuffle and seed. Now seed basically just allows you to make the random more deterministic. So basically we'll get the same random values each time by applying a seed. With this, I repeat my experiments deterministically. So we'll just run this seed equals one now we're going to create a list called evens which basically just takes all the even numbers and i'll run evens and you'll see that i have a list of even numbers zero two four six eight now we'll shuffle it and we'll run evens all right so now we have a shuffled list now you guys are probably familiar with filter if not i do have a video on that but filter basically has a condition and it filters out based on the true value returned from that condition. So you feed it a list and you feed it a condition and applies this condition to each element of the list and those that return a true value will be returned. So the condition I have is anything above 2. So if I return this, I get everything above 2 which is 4, 6, 8. So iter tools we have drop while and take while. So first we're focusing on drop while. Now what drop while is going to do is we're going to be applying the same expression, but until the expression first encounters a false value, you're not going to get any values back. And once it gets the first false value, you are going to get all of the elements from there on. So let's just take a look at our evens list. So basically, we start off with a 2. Now, is x greater than 2? No. So this is going to return a false value. So that once you get a false value, an internal flag is clicked on. I'm not really sure if there's an internal flag, but just for this example, an internal flag is clicked on, and after that, every single element is returned. So once you get that false value, every single element thereafter is returned. However, if the first element is not a false value, it's going to wait until you get a false value back, and then the internal flag gets marked or set to true, and you start getting all the elements back. So in our case, since the first element is not greater than 2, that should set the flag to true, and we should get back all the elements. And I think the 2 is included as well. Let's just see. All right, so here we go. So the 2 is included as well. So basically, the 2 set off the false value because it's not greater than 2, and then we get back the 2 included, all the elements thereafter. Now let's take a look at another example. So in this case, we're going to use filter with lambda. If you guys are not familiar with that, I've made videos on that as well. So I have two lists, x and y, and you'll see that x contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and y contains 1, 2, 4, 4, 5. So I was trying to sort of showcase corrupted data. We have x, which is the true value, and y, which is corrupted data. So the 3 should be actually a 3, but it turned into a 4. So what we're doing in this example is once we get the first instance of a corrupted data, we want to drop all the data after that. 
because once we hit that corrupted data, everything else is also considered corrupted. So this is a very contrived example, but I tried my best. All right, so we'll run this list, and now filter is basically just looking at each element, but in this case, we're zipping everything, x and y, so it's looking at each tuple and seeing if they are equal. So it's basically comparing 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5. And it's only returning the matching elements. So in this case, 1, 2, 4, 5 should be matching. All right, so 1, 2, 4, 5. However, that filter, we don't want that. What we want is once the first non-matching element is encountered, we consider everything after that corrupted. So this is where drop wall will come into play. Basically, we're trying to extract the corrupted data. And since 1 and 2 match, 3, you can see the 3 and 4, the 3 and 4 are not matching, so that's where the corrupted data starts. From then on, everything's considered corrupted. So we want to extract that. So we do that with drop wall. Drop while just drops all the positive or the true values, and once we hit that first value, it'll return everything thereafter. So if we run this, we should get back 3, 4, 5. So we get back 3, 4, 4, 5. So in this case, we're getting back the tuples because I've zipped it, but the corrupted data is represented by the second elements, the y, y, 4, 4, 5, and you can easily extract those values with a list comprehension or something else. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at take while. Take while is the complete opposite in the sense that with drop while, you're dropping all of the values until you hit a false, and then you'll take everything after the false. With take while, you'll take all the values that are true until you hit a false, and then once you hit a false, you drop everything. So with drop while, once again, you're going to continue dropping all the values until you hit a false, and then you extract all the values. With take while, what you're going to do is you're going to go through the list or iterate through the list and if it's a true item you take it and you continue taking it but once you hit that first false you stop taking any elements so let's take a look at this i've actually changed the seed because i wanted to create a better example so if you look at evens now the first value will be true because x is greater than two the second value will be true six is greater than two but then the third value sets off the false flag. So from there on out, we're going to drop all the values. So we're only extracting the 4 and the 6 because those are the true values. Now with filter, if you would have used a filter in this situation, you would have extracted the 4, 6, and the 8. But with take while, what happens is once you set off that flag, every element thereafter will be dropped. So with take while, we're taking everything until we hit a false. So let's just run this, and we should be getting back a 4 and a 6. There we go. Because the 2 sets off the false flag, and everything else is dropped afterward. Alright, so that's it with drop while and take while. Hopefully it wasn't too difficult. I will see you guys in the next video.